The crab family, also known as Brachyura, showcases a breathtaking variety with 1,476 species spread across 14 families. These fascinating creatures make their homes in nearly every corner of the world, everywhere but the icy expanse of Antarctica. Among them, 1,306 species belong to eight families that thrive in freshwater alone, including the Pseudothilfusidae and Trichodactylidae, among others. Crabs have conquered a wide array of habitats, they're as comfortable in the depths of the ocean as they are in freshwater rivers or on land. Now let's take a quick journey to meet seven of these remarkable species. Pseudothelphusidae. The Pseudothelphusidae family is a vibrant tapestry of neotropical freshwater crabs, boasting 40 genera and over 255 species and subspecies. These crabs are not just a marvel of biodiversity. They hold pivotal roles in various biological fields, especially in tropical medicine. Many Pseudothelphusidae species act as intermediate hosts for lung flukes of the Paragonimus genus, a type of parasite that can affect humans and other animals. In many neotropic rural communities, including among indigenous populations, these crabs are a vital part of the diet. However, this dietary preference carries a risk as the crabs can transmit parasites not just to humans, but also to pigs, dogs, wildcats, and weasels. These animals, in turn, are part of a larger ecosystem involving various snails, which serve as the primary hosts for the parasites, completing their life cycle in a fascinating interplay of species. Trichodactylida. The Trichodactylida family is a fascinating group of crabs that spans the length of the Americas, with 50 species found from southern Mexico all the way down to Argentina. These crabs typically call the rivers that feed into the Atlantic Ocean their home. In Brazil, the diversity of the Trichodactylida family is particularly noteworthy. Here, 32 species are grouped into 10 different genera. A notable five of these species are found in northeastern Brazil, including the likes of Trichodactylus fluviatilis and Dilocarcinus septendentatus, among others. Interestingly, four of these species are also present in the state of Maranhão, showcasing the rich biodiversity and the specific habitats that these crabs inhabit. Dakinia. Dakinia is a unique genus of freshwater crabs hailing from East Africa, fitting snugly within the Potamonotida family, though sometimes it's considered distinct enough to form its own family, Dakinida. Named in honor of Karl Klaus von der Decken by Hilgendorf, these crabs are a testament to the exploratory journeys that brought them to scientific attention. Their habitat spans from the marshes of Isle and Somalia to Dar es Salaam in Tanzania, marking a presence both along the coast and further inland. Interestingly, a species initially classified under Dakinia, Dakinia aluadi, has been reclassified into a new genus, Cicellum, highlighting the dynamic understanding of crab species in science. Dakinia encompasses two species, Dakinia imitatrix, which resides along the coastal plains stretching from Kenya to Somalia, and Dakinia midis, found in selected locations in Kenya and more broadly across Tanzania. Both species face threats from habitat loss, earning them a status of near-endangered on the IUCN Red List. Tachinia imitatrix, in particular, suffers from its restricted coastal range, while Dakinia mitis has a slightly broader range, but still faces significant environmental challenges. Platythelfusa. Platythelfusa is a distinctive genus of freshwater crabs native to the biodiverse waters of Lake Tanganyika. Its classification journey has been quite the odyssey, finding its place among various families, even being recognized as its own family, Platythelfusidae, at one point. Currently, it resides under the Potamonotidae family, but has had close ties with Potamidae, and even been considered a subgenus of Potamonots. The genus forms a unique monophyletic group that challenges the boundaries of Potamonots, potentially rendering it paraphyletic. Remarkably, Platythelfusa represents the only known instance of crab evolution in a freshwater lake setting, 
a phenomenon paralleling the famed cichlid fish radiation in Lake Tanganyika, suggesting this divergence occurred relatively recently since the Pliocene. Within the expansive waters of Lake Tanganyika, there exists just one other freshwater crab species, Potaminots platinovis. This fact alone underscores the remarkable diversity and unique ecological niche of the Platythelfusa genus in this ancient African lake. Diving into the world of Platythelfusa, each species reveals its adaptation to the lake's diverse habitats. Platythelfusa conculcata flourishes at depths of 20 to 60 meters. Its stable population has earned it a classification of least concern by the IUCN. Platythelfusa denticulata, with its presence in selected Tanzanian locations, showcases the localized diversity within the lake. Platythelfusa echinata finds its home in the shallow waters of 5 to 30 meters along the Tanzanian and Burundian coastlines. It prefers rough or sandy substrates and sometimes utilizes ancient Neothalma snail shells for habitat. Platythelfusa immaculata, known from a small collection of just 25 specimens, is still categorized as least concern, showing no immediate threats to its existence. Platythelfusa maculata and Platythelfusa polita are inhabitants of sandy and rocky substrates, sometimes alongside Neothalma shells, thriving across a depth range and listed as least concern for their well-being. Platythelfusa prelongata is notable for inhabiting the deepest parts of their range, with the sole known specimen found at depths of 40 to 80 meters off Mbita Island, leading to its status as data deficient due to the scarcity of data. Platythelfusa tuberculata, recognized for its longer legs, occupies the muddy substrates near the lake's northern end. Its presence in the diets of local fish species like Chrysichthys burchinoa and Bathybagris stapersi highlights its role in the lake's food web. These species together paint a vivid picture of adaptation and diversity, each playing a role in the delicate balance of Lake Tanganyika's aquatic ecosystem. Next is the Potamidae. The Potamidae family, boasting around 500 species, enjoys a broad distribution across the Oriental, Palarctic, and Afrotropical regions. Its richest diversity is found in the eastern lands, where the bulk of recent scientific inquiry has been dedicated to unveiling new species, particularly from the Oriental and Eastern Palarctic areas. The focus of phylogenetic studies within the Potamida family often zeroes in on genera found in Central and Eastern Asia, highlighting a significant interest in these areas' crab species. However, when it comes to the genus Potamon, established in 1816 by Savigny, there's a notable scarcity of research concerning their evolutionary history, especially on the western extent of their habitat range. Potamon encompasses 22 recognized species, spreading from Naples in the east to Morocco in the west. This range includes the Caucasus and Southern Europe, marking the diverse habitat. In Southern Europe, Potamon is notably present in Italy and other northeastern Mediterranean countries, though it's conspicuously absent from the Iberian Peninsula. The presence of Potamon ibericum in France is attributed to human introduction rather than natural dispersion. In North Africa, this genus finds a home in the southwestern Mediterranean countries and Morocco's northern Atlantic basins, as observed in our studies. This distribution pattern and the deep historical roots of the Potamon genus render it a fascinating subject for studying the biogeographical connections and animal exchanges between North Africa and Southern Europe. The peculiar distribution of Potamon species in these regions serves as a reminder of the Mediterranean area's complex biogeographical narratives, illustrating how historical movements, climate change, and human activities have woven the intricate ecological tapestry we see today. G. Carcinusidae. The G. Carcinusidae family introduces us to genuine freshwater crabs that have cast a wide net across South Asia, Southeast Asia, and New Guinea, marking their territory with a solitary genus reaching as far as Australia. Originating from the Indian subcontinent during its Paleogene era island continent phase, the Jakarchanusidae's roots are not tied to ancient Gondwanan origins, setting them apart from other lineages thought to have begun in what is referred to as Insular India. 
Instead, divergence estimates suggest a fascinating journey from Southeast Asian ancestors who ventured to India in the Middle Eocene, at a time before India's dramatic merger with Asia. This migration is believed to have been facilitated by India, drifting close enough to Southeast Asia, enabling biotic exchange between the two regions despite the freshwater nature of Kikarshanusidae, which precluded marine dispersal. This scenario posits the emergence of ephemeral land bridges during the Eocene, which would have allowed freshwater species to make their way to the then isolated Indian landmass. Following the monumental geological event of the India-Asia collision, the Jakarkjanusidae embarked on a reverse journey, spreading back into continental Asia and onwards to Australasia. In the grand tapestry of freshwater crab families, the Jakarkjanusidae are considered the sister group to the Potamoidea superfamily, which includes the Potamidae and Potamonotidae. This relationship underscores the intricate evolutionary pathways and geographical migrations that have shaped the distribution and diversity of freshwater crabs across the Asian and Australasian regions, painting a picture of ancient continents on the move and the enduring legacy of those shifts in today's natural world. Parathelfusinae. The Parathelfusinae subfamily, a collection of freshwater crabs, originally grouped under the Parathelfusidae family, showcases a widespread presence primarily in South and Southeast Asia, though their range extends to other parts of Asia and even Australia. These crabs are versatile in their habitats, making their homes in rivers, lakes, and even man-made environments like rice fields, demonstrating their adaptability to various aquatic environments. In certain regions, members of the Parathelfusinae, such as those from the genus Somaniathelfusa, hold a significant place in local cuisines and cultures. For instance, in Thailand and Mizoram, India, these crabs are a key ingredient in traditional dishes like somtam, highlighting their importance not just in biodiversity, but also in human dietary practices and cultural heritage. However, amidst this subfamily's wide distribution and culinary significance, there exists a pressing concern for conservation. Some species within the Parathelfusinae are on the brink of extinction. A poignant example is the Parathelfusa reticulata, known as Singapore's swamp forest crab, which is facing severe threats to its survival. A crab's journey. The journey of a fiddler crab from egg to adulthood is a fascinating spectacle of nature cycles. Female fiddler crabs, sometimes referred to as sponge crabs due to the cluster of eggs held under their abdomen, carry hundreds to thousands of eggs. In due time, these eggs are released into the water, hatching into zoa, the free-swimming larval stage of crabs. These zoa larvae join the vast community of plankton in the open sea, undergoing several molting phases as they mature. The older larvae, known as megalopa, eventually molt into juvenile crabs. This transformation marks the end of their pelagic journey, which can last from several weeks to months, varying by species. Upon returning to the shore, the young crabs continue their growth. Initially, male and female crabs are indistinguishable from each other. However, as they mature, the distinctive secondary sexual characteristics, such as the male's asymmetric claws, start to develop. This leads to the mating cycle, beginning anew the generational saga of the fiddler crab, living with humans. Fiddler crabs, much like snakes, lizards, and lion cubs, do not form emotional bonds with humans. Although one might foster a fondness for these creatures, the sentiment is not reciprocated. As Anne Cohen from the Smithsonian's Department of Invertebrate Zoology, who has four pet hermit crabs, remarks, Crabs are not creatures of affection. They dislike being handled and may react defensively if provoked, though they pose no real danger. Crabs, akin to snakes, also undergo a process of molting, shedding their exoskeleton to grow. This is a natural phase during which some species are believed to consume their shed skin for its calcium content. Distinguishing between male and female crabs can be challenging without close inspection. Males have tufts of hair concealing the openings on the first segment of their last pair of legs and do not have the appendages for egg-carrying that characterize female abdomens. 
Females feature a visible opening on the first segment of their third pair of legs. This insight wraps up our exploration for now. Remember, the natural world is replete with wonders waiting to be discovered. Don't forget to like and subscribe for more intriguing insights. Until our next adventure, farewell.